Hey guys, it's Sarah. I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Um, I haven't been home the last couple evenings, so I've not been able to share what we were having for dinner. It was nothing exciting, but I am home this evening, and I have time before I have to go pick Evan up from football, so I'm going to start dinner now, and then I'll finish it when he gets home, but I thought I would let y'all join me. Um, tonight, I am fixing, it's actually Evan's favorite meal. It is chicken fettuccine, and it is actually my Aunt Diane's recipe that I had years and years ago, and I have made it ever since. So, hopefully y'all will enjoy this. Um, had to move where my camera was tonight because we're doing this on the stovetop, so it might be a little difficult to see. I'll adjust the camera um, as I do different things, but hopefully y'all can um, kind of follow along. Um, to start with, I'm using the 12-inch skillet. Love, love, love this piece of executive cookware. Um, it's plenty big enough for doing this whole meal that is going to feed um, all of us. Well, actually, Chris is out of town, so we're having um, a friend of mine and a football player um, that, and hit her, anyway, we're having some people over for dinner. So it's going to feed all of us. Um, so I love using my big 12-inch skillet for this. I'm going to start with making the chicken, and this is our splatter screen. A lot of people have never seen the splatter screen, never paid attention to it in the catalog, but I love it because it'll fit on any type of cookware that is 12 inches or smaller, round or square. It folds in half, and you'll see um, what that comes in handy for in a little bit when I flip the um, chicken. Okay, so let's get to how we make this chicken fettuccine. We're just going to start with a little bit of butter in the pan, and I've already got the, sto the stove top turned on a little, so the, stove the skillet's already warm, but I'm just going to let that butter melt for just a second um, in here and kind of let it melt all in the bottom, and then what I did a little bit earlier today was take two packages of chicken tenders. So this is just boneless, skinless chicken tenders, if y'all can see that. And I seasoned it with our Parmesan dipping seasoning. Let me do some shout outs. Hey, Lori Castleberry, Julie Howard. Hey, my neighbor Carrie is uh, following. You should just come on over and have dinner. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Grant. Oh, another neighbor, Emily. Hey, I already threatened Micah and John Allen not to come upstairs while I was doing this, so maybe they'll listen. Um, so anyway, hopefully you guys will um, enjoy this. But all right, so we seasoned the chicken with the Parmesan dipping seasoning. I'm also going to use this on my um, homemade garlic bread that we're gonna make in just a second. So this is two packages of chicken tenders. It was a little over two pounds worth of chicken and I'm just going to put it down in here in this skillet. The reason I'm using the splatter screen, my whole stove top is not going to be covered with a bunch of the butter splattering all over the place. Now right there is exactly why I love this splatter screen and how I closed it and then opened the other side so I can add chicken on the other side without any splattering mess. Um, if you wanted to do this recipe with chicken, um, chicken breast instead you could easily do that. I just like to use the chicken tenders because it's less trimming that I have to do on them. Um, I am going to add a little bit of salt onto them with our new grinders um, that coming out September 1st. So I can just flip it to the other side and then I'm going to close it so that while it is cooking it's not going all over my countertop. Okay, and now we need to get some of our other stuff ready to go in this while it cooks. Let me turn up the heat a little. Um, and real quick, let me finish talking about the 12-inch skillet and any of our cookware for that matter. All of our non-stick executive cookware is actually the coating is baked on, not sprayed on like most store-bought cookware is. Um, it also comes with a lifetime warranty as does our stainless cookware, but um, this is an executive piece, so it's the nonstick. The nonstick coating is baked on both on the inside and outside, and it's done in three layers. And some say, well, what does that matter? The importance of that is if you were to get a scratch or a nick in your cookware, 
there's two layers up under that, so chances are it's not going to peel up because you still have two more layers um, under the initial layer. The other thing is it's coated, it's baked on on the outside. And why is that important? If you're ever doing anything and it boils over, it's still going to be very easy to clean up because the outside of the um, skillet, the pot, whatever it is you're using is non-stick. All of our cookware is oven safe. So if I needed to do this recipe starting on my stovetop and move it into the oven, I could easily do that because it is oven safe. Now a little note, when you put this in the oven, your handle will be hot. And you might be laughing at that, but you do not know how many times I hear consultants or um, customers that have the cookware, they put it in the oven, and then when they go to take it out, they just naturally grab the handle without an oven mitt and then burn the mess out of their hands. Yes, it's going to be hot because the entire thing is in the oven. So just a little note there. Okay, so the other stuff, and let me lower this a little so you can see my cutting mat. There you go. All right, so what we're going to do after, this is just some green onion. I've rinsed it already, so y'all didn't have to wait for me to rinse it. Um, but what we're going to do is get some green onion and garlic ready to go in this skillet when our chicken is done. Um, and I'm using my favorite, favorite knife. As you can see right here in the background, I have the entire knife block set and the kitchen shears. So I have lots of our forge cutlery knives, but this five inch, Santuco knife is my preferred, my favorite knife. Um, why is it my favorite? Because it's the most versatile. It's big enough for my big jobs and small enough for my smaller jobs. This is the seven inch version of this same knife. And this is very intimidating to me. It is not my preferred knife. It actually looks brand new. <laughs> really probably has not been used, but a very select few times. But this is my go-to. It's five inches. It's full tang, meaning the blade starts up here and goes all the way to the end. It is part of our German Forge Steel collection, so it is lifetime warranty. Let me flip my chicken real quick. Um, it is lifetime warranty, but none of our Forge Cutlery knives, or our green knives for that matter, are dishwasher safe. You want to hand wash them and then dry them. I like to put it in my knife block right away. Um, the reason they're not dishwasher safe, it's too abrasive on it. It will dull the blade and it can damage the blade if anything knocks up against it. So you don't want to be sticking it in the dishwasher. Okay, in case you're wondering, I just flipped the chicken with our large chef's tongs. Absolutely love these. They are silicone covered, so they are not scratching my non-stick cookware. So love, love, love those. Um, Okay, so this is going to be lots of squirrel moments because I'm going to have lots of things going on at once, so you're just going to have to follow along. This is how I cook anyway, so just follow along. Um, but anyway, full tang, not dishwasher safe, but very easy to clean. Just take a soapy rag, wash it off, then dry it, stick it back in your knife block. When you're holding a knife this size, put your thumb on the blade and wrap around, and now I have control of where I'm going to be cutting. Um, I have a flexible cutting mat sitting on my stove top, so I'm not going to be scratching my stove top. If you are Rachel Ray, I am not, you can do the rocking motion with this knife and slice that way, or you can do like I'm doing where I'm just kind of going down and pulling back. Now the green onion, for this recipe, I'm mostly doing just the white part, but then I am going to continue slicing up a little bit into the green, but I'm not going to go all the way to the end. So. Um, you just kind of get the good flavor from, you know, this is basically I'm creating scallions out of these green onions. But I don't need all of it. I'm going to do just a little bit more. I wish live, live um, Facebook live videos let you guys smell this because my chicken already smells good and we had not even really done a whole lot. Alright, so that's probably enough green onion for this. And then we're going to add, let me set that out of the way, we're going to add a couple cloves of fresh garlic. Hold on, let me scroll up. Oh, I can't read all y'all's comments. I messed it up. Um, Brandy, you have the, okay, see this seven inch though? I mean, that is like as big as my arm. Like that is just too intimidating for me. Maybe one day I'll get brave and I'll start loving it. Let's see what else. 
Hey, Cindy. Yes, you can move in with me. Come on. Dinner will be ready when I get home from football with um, Evan. Chris is in Las Vegas, so I'm having to hold down the fort. Hey, Beth. Oh, Grant, I just saw that you got a call. I'm taking it. You're at the fire station. I hope that everything is okay. Go put out that fire, and hopefully everybody is safe. Um, we love all of our um, servicemen and women and our firefighters, all that stuff. All right, let's flip our chicken again. I don't know if y'all can hear how good it sounds. Sauteing in this little bit of butter. And usually this only, I mean, it doesn't take real long. That's the other reason I like using the chicken tenders, because that doesn't take as long for them to cook all the way through as it would if it were thick um, chicken breast. And one thing to note with cookware, don't ever cook above a medium, not even really medium high. I've got mine set on um, six which is right at the medium level. If you've got good cookware, it will evenly distribute the heat. It's a big misconception that you need to cook on a really high heat setting. Um, if your cookware is a good quality cookware, like the Pampered Chef cookware, you do not need to cook on a real high heat setting. Hello, Miss Stacy. Okay, so back to our um, other stuff we're fixing. So we've got some scallions that I just cut up. Now we're gonna do a couple cloves of fresh garlic with our garlic press. Mackenzie, why are you joining? You should be on your way home from band. Anyway, if you're driving, you better be off Facebook. Um, with our garlic press, you do not peel the clove of garlic. So you're just gonna put the clove in the press with the skin on it. I'm just gonna crush it into my pile of scallions because I don't need it just yet. But all that, I don't know if y'all can see, but all that garlic crushed through it, you should have a little gray tool that stores in the handle of your garlic press. I don't know where mine is, so we're going to use a paring knife to dig out the peel. But here is our garlic peel, so I did not have to touch the garlic. So my hands aren't going to smell like garlic. I don't have to worry about having garlic all over the place. Um, I've given this tip before, and if you've ever been to any of my parties, if you get garlic on your hands, use a spoon out of your silverware tray or use your sink if it's stainless and rub, um, rub them on the stainless and it'll get the smell out from the garlic. All right, let's, okay, and I wish y'all could see my stovetop. Maybe you can, I don't know, but I'm not getting any splattering from this chicken because of the splatter screen. So this is just a very handy, you know, if you're cooking bacon on your stove top, the splatter screen's great so you don't get all that grease going. Um, just all kinds of things to use it for. All right, so that just has another minute or two, and then we're going to take it off. But in the meantime, we're going to get some stuff ready to um, get our fresh garlic bread going. And this is just how I like to make my garlic bread. I don't have a specific recipe. I've just always made it this way, especially when I'm doing this for parties. So I'm using some of our garlic-infused canola oil. Hey, Christina, how are you? Um, using our garlic-infused canola oil, I'm just going to create a little mixture in one of our prep bowls. So I just put a little bit of garlic oil in there. We're still going to crush um, a clove or two. We'll do two because these are not, these are kind of average-sized garlic cloves. We're going to do two cloves of garlic. I don't know if y'all can see this bowl or not. So we're crushing that. Actually, we're only going to do one because that did have a lot of garlic in it. So one clove of garlic into our garlic-infused oil. And then we're, let me set that aside. Then we're going to add some of this Parmesan dipping seasoning to this. I'm not measuring it. I'm just pouring it in there. And we're going to use our silicone basting brush. I may need a little more oil. And we're going to use this to brush on our bread in just a second. But I actually want to take our chicken out now. And I'm going to show you how to make the fettuccine sauce. Because I think our chicken is pretty... Let me just check a couple pieces. Hang on one second. Let me just make sure it's all done. I don't want my kids getting sick from uncooked chicken. Although this chicken is also going to... Um, stay in the sauce mix for a little while on very low heat when I go pick up Evan. Oh yeah, it's done. 
All right, so we're gonna move this, still leaving the splatter screen on here so that it is not getting stuff all over my counter. My daughter just came home. That means she was watching it while she was driving or at a red light. Oh, she was in the garage. She just informed me. Okay, so she's not in trouble. Um, okay, so now we're going to take, so we still have a little bit of um, the butter in here and a little bit of fawn, in case you're not familiar with what that is. It's just some of the um, kind of that brown stuff that will um, come off your meat when you're searing it. So we're going to now add our garlic and scallions to, using the flexible cutting mat, makes it very easy, dump it in here, but we're just going to put that down in the bottom of my skillet. Um, it's very important when you're heating up, especially the garlic, but the garlic and onions in here, don't overcook them. You just want to do it for just a minute or two. I don't want my garlic to burn in here, but I want to heat it up before I add my other ingredients to make the fettuccine sauce. So, and again, because I'm using the silicone covered chef's tongs, I'm not scratching my cookware when I'm stirring this around. All right, so that's pretty good. Now what we're gonna add, and I'll take off the splatter screen in a minute. I'm gonna do two half pints of whipping cream. I'm doing one of them that's heavy whipping cream and one of them that's regular. Um, yeah, don't, don't watch the videos and drive, Christina. Only watch it at um, red lights or once you stop, you can watch the whole thing in its entirety because it'll stay out here. But anyway, I'm using one half pint of heavy whipping cream and one of regular just because I don't want it to be um, quite as heavy as using two things of heavy whipping cream. But we're just going to pour that in with our scallions. Now I can take off the splatter screen. And this goes in the dishwasher. So I'll just stick it in the dishwasher and it'll be good to go the next time I need it. Let's add the other one. And I'm actually going to turn down the heat a little. All right, so we got both of our whipping creams. I'm going to grab a scraper. We're going to kind of stir that around. Um, the other day when I was making, I don't remember what, um, not sure what recipe I was doing where I was doing the shredded trees. Oh, my guacamole maybe, and I shred some fresh cheese. I need my spoon rest. Um, I was shredding some fresh cheese and told you how quick and easy it is. Well, earlier today, I went ahead and shredded my own Parmesan. So it was a block that was this big. And instead of using the fine grater, I used the coarse grater because I wanted shaved Parmesan cheese for this recipe. But um, this was one block. It took me 45 seconds to shred all this fresh Parmesan cheese. So my fettuccine sauce is going to taste amazing because I have no cellulose because I shredded my own cheese. What did you just say, Leanne? <laughs> hey, Leanne. Yes, I like doing quick recipes. I don't have time to be in this kitchen very long. All right, so I'm just going to put my pre-shredded cheese that is only pre-shredded because I shredded it. So it's not really pre-shredded. It's very, very fresh. I shredded it, I don't know, like at 1 o'clock today. Put it in one of these leak-proof containers to store. Um, so we're going to put that in here and let this kind of melt. So we do have to stir it around a little bit to get it melting. I am going to add a little bit of salt. Love, love, love our Himalayan sea salt. And then I'm going to add, and I don't measure this, but a little bit of cooking sherry to this. I would say probably... I don't know, two tablespoons maybe. I just kind of pour it in there until it looks good. Um, I like this brand, this Holland House. That's the only brand I've ever actually used with this, and I really do um, like it. So, all right, so we're going to stir that around. And my cheese is melting, but we're going to let it sit and continue melting for a minute while we chop up the chicken. So, like I said, see this one, you got to be multitasking. All right. I've also talked about salad choppers a lot, and if you don't have these, you're missing out, you need them. They are item 2582, they're only $28.50, they're lifetime warranty. This is two packages of the chicken tenders we just sauteed in 
the 12 inch skillet and I it's very hot I don't know if y'all can still see it is steaming maybe can't see it I, hey Kai how are you <laughs> um, I don't want to burn my fingers so I am using the salad choppers to chop up all this chicken they also kind of have like a little scoop on the bottom I don't know if y'all can see so I can use that to kind of scoop up the chicken that's on the very bottom mix it up oh I gotta turn my heat down hold on now my sister is trying to call me she's on her way home from work I'm sure because she calls every day about five o'clock um, all right I don't want my sauce to burn all right so let's keep on chopping our chicken and I do need to stop calling Hey, Mackenzie, can you call Aunt Becca and tell her I'm busy, please? Just go in the bedroom and call her. Tell her dinner is being prepared. I cannot talk. Gotta love live TV, right? All right, so if I wasn't interrupted, I could have chopped that up even quicker. But here is all our chopped chicken that is now going to go back into our fettuccine sauce. Um, and I actually like to make this, oh, we've got a couple big pieces. I need to still chop that. I like to make this and let it simmer for a little while. If I'm in a rush, it still tastes good if it doesn't have time to simmer, but it's also even better when it has time to kind of simmer. So that's why I went ahead and decided to make it before picking up Evan from football, because then that way it'll sit on the stove top on a very low setting. See, look, I just splashed some on the side of my skillet, but because it's nonstick, it'll clean up really easy when I go to wash this later. All right, so we're gonna mix in our chicken. And we are, uh, we're gonna add just a little bit more salt, and that will be it, and we're gonna let this just simmer. All right, so a little more salt, stir that. And we're going to let this simmer till it's time to eat dinner. And we'll be eating in about, I don't know, probably about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Um, so it will actually be very good because it will have simmered for a good little while. Sometimes I make it even earlier than that. Okay, so then for the pasta part, what I'm going to do, and I'll get it ready, but I'm not going to actually cook it. I do want to just show y'all this. I always do my pasta in our four quart Dutch oven rock crock. And I just used two cans of chicken broth. So um, I don't boil it on the stove top. I don't use water. I use two cans of chicken broth and I do 16 minutes in the microwave covered. Um, no, Christina, the skillet is not dishwasher safe. None of the life, none of the nonstick cooker is dishwasher safe, and that actually goes for any good quality nonstick cookware. You do not want to put it in the dishwasher. It will eat away at your nonstick coating. Our stainless cookware is, but our nonstick is not. But the thing about it is, since it is professional quality cookware, oh, just drop some pasta. Since it's professional quality, it's very easy to hand wash. Even if I let it sit all night and I didn't clean it, tomorrow it would be easy to clean. So, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh-oh, Jane, have you been putting yours in the dishwasher? Do not put it in the dishwasher because that actually voids the warranty if you put it in the dishwasher. So do not put it in the dishwasher anymore. All right, so this was one box. It was a pound, I believe. Yeah, 16-ounce box of fettuccine noodles and then I'm going to use two cans of chicken broth so well Jane if you only did it once you're probably good so just don't do it again just hand wash it from now and you'll be good okay so for the chicken broth I am going to use the smooth edge can opener on one of my last videos we talked about the importance of using the can opener so that it is safe what'd you say Christina, you put yours in the dishwasher? Okay, again, just stop putting it in. If you have already put it in, just don't do it anymore. So to use the can opener, you put the little bumper down on the side of the can and it goes towards the middle. Let me make some room. I have too much stuff on my stove top here. Hang on. Get that out of the way. All right, so you just put it 
bumping in the middle, start with the label facing you, go clockwise and it will grab hold and just keep turning till you get all the way around. What'd you say, Leanne? Yes, you need to use your rock crock. Oh my word, the rock crock is amazing. I use it constant. All right, so I'm pouring one can of chicken broth in there. We're gonna pour the second can after we open it. Super quick, super easy. And I'm not gonna get cut. I don't have any gross stuff that just went down in my pasta because there was no blade that, um, that let anything on the top of the can get in to my food. All right, mix that around. Now I'm not going to act, cook this yet just because um, what will happen, I'm gonna do this in the microwave for 16 minutes and I'll actually set it in there now but I'm not gonna start it. But I'll do 16 minutes and it is going to absorb all of the chicken broth. So my pasta is almost gonna taste buttery. Um, you can stir it part way through if you want. I sometimes do, not always. Let me move that out of the way because that's dirty. Um, so it's just kind of up to you if you wanna stir it part way through. I usually just let it go the full 16 minutes and then when I'm done, um, if it does need to go another minute or two, I'll stir it and do another minute or two. But 16 minutes in the microwave, my fettuccine will be done. My fettuccine Alfredo, is, or chicken fettuccine, is already done. Let me show you what it looks like. Oh, it's hot, hot, hot. Because then we're gonna prep our garlic bread, and then I'm gonna go pick up my son from football. People keep messaging me. Stop messaging me. All right, so and I need to turn this down even lower. All right, so here's, can y'all see that? Oh, I don't want it to dump out. This is my, let me see if I can lower the screen a little. Hold on. All right, so there, that really didn't do anything. There is our chicken fettuccine. Yum! Smells amazing. I say it's my son's favorite, but it's also one of my favorite recipes. Um, okay, so how did you know to do 16 minutes? I have no idea. Someone just said that 16 minutes is what you do for pasta, Christina. So I just, I just do 16 minutes. So, um, and it does depend, like the fettuccine sometimes takes a couple minutes extra because it is a thicker pasta. When I do spaghetti, it definitely is 16 minutes. Um, you can also do like bow tie or linguine, really any kind of pasta. And if you're doing one pound, then you're just going to do the 16 minutes. If you're doing less pasta, you probably need less time. Um, like Christina, for your family, if it's just you and Bill, you would probably only need half of a box. So I would only do one can of chicken broth, half a box of the pasta, start with eight minutes. If it's not absorbed all the liquid, then do a couple more minutes till it absorbs all the chicken broth. Um, Today I just bought regular chicken broth. Sometimes I'll do the lower sodium just so that I'm not adding more salt to it, but I just grabbed regular today, so it was good. Let's see, what'd you say? No, Jane, I, you might have missed that. I did not use canned Alfredo. My Alfredo sauce was, um, I had shaved with the coarse grater. I had shaved one block of Parmesan cheese. Then I did, um, two half pints of whipping cream. I did one that was regular whipping cream and one that was um, heavy whipping cream. And then I added a little bit of cooking sherry and a little bit of salt. I also had a little bit of green onions and garlic that I um, chopped up the green onions and then pressed a couple cloves of garlic and sauteed that after I had pulled the chicken out of the pot. So that, it was just the heavy whipping cream the um, fresh Parmesan cheese, the cooking sherry, and the green onions and garlic that made my white sauce. And then it was two packages of um, grilled chicken tenders that, that we sauteed in the pan. Okay, so let's go back to our garlic bread prep. So this is just a loaf of French bread from Publix. I am going to use, 
our bread knife, also from the Forge Cutlery Collection. Um, if you're ever slicing bread, you do want to use a serrated blade. I don't know if y'all can see that blade, but use a serrated blade because then it won't smash your bread like that when you cut it. Instead, your pieces will look like this. And that's what we're wanting. We want to have nice, um, you know, non-smashed pieces so that we can add. I'm going to do an oil mixture and then some um, fresh cheese sprinkled on top. So all of my pieces are, are turning out really flat and then I'm laying them flat on one of our new pieces of stoneware. I don't know if y'all can see all of that, but I'm using um, the new large serving stone. Hold on, let me get all my bread cut. And you can also do this where you just slice the bread in half and then open it up and do it all in one, but then I'd have to slice it later. So I kind of just slice in the beginning and then my bread is ready to go once it cooks. Now I'm not going to actually bake it right now. Again, on that, I'll wait to put it in the oven when I get home from picking up Evan, but I'm gonna have it ready to go in the oven. We're gonna kind of force a few extra pieces on here. Um, and all I'm going to do when my pasta is cooking, I'll cook the bread. So I'm going to do um, probably 375 or 400, um, preheat the oven for that, and then um, cook it pretty much as long as the pasta, probably about 15 minutes. I'll check it, make sure it's not burning. Get these crumbs off my stovetop real quick. Okay, so here's my platter of bread and what we're going to do, let me wipe off my bread knife and I, that, you know, my bread knife really wasn't even getting dirty because that was just, um, yeah, Kai, you do want the new stoneware. That was just dry bread. So really just getting the crumbs off, then it's good to go back in there. Um, I didn't have any liquid of any kind on that. Okay. But in case you missed kind of in the beginning when I was doing our chicken in this little prep bowl, I have some garlic infused canola oil a little bit of Parmesan dipping seasoning and a couple, I think I did one clove of garlic that I pressed into here and I'm using our silicone basting brush. And all I'm gonna do is just brush each piece of bread with this mixture. And I'm, I don't know, I would say I'm somewhat generous with it, but I mean, I'm not putting tons and tons of oil on here just enough to coat the top of the bread and then we're going to shred both mozzarella and parmesan cheese on the top of this but we're shredding it fresh we are not using pre-shredded or bag me a little bit more oil i use this garlic infused oil for a ton of things i will um use it on my vegetables, like I'll coat my vegetables that I'm gonna grill or steam in the garlic infused oil. And then I'll season them with either that Parmesan dipping seasoning I'm using or garlic and herb rub, maybe Greek rub. It just depends what flavor I want in the vegetables. But I'll always coat my vegetables in the oil first. And I like using the garlic infused oil because then I kind of get a little added garlic flavor. All right, I gotta do a couple more pieces. And what's great about the stone that I'm using, it's stoneware, but then, yeah, I use most of that, but then it's um, pretty to serve off of. So when this all comes out, I can arrange it, you know, kind of stacked on there and it'll look really pretty. All right, so we're going to use a little bit of fresh mozzarella and fresh Parmesan. And I'm going to do the mozzarella with the coarse grater because it's a softer cheese. Now I did use the coarse grater on the Parmesan that went into my sauce because I wanted that to be shaved Parmesan. I didn't want it to be finely shredded like you'll see for the garlic bread. So I did use um, the coarse grater before, but all I'm gonna do, and I'm not even gonna cut the block of cheese because I don't need to. So I'm going to hold the grater straight out. I could do it standing up if I was doing this on a cutting mat. And then to store it, just do it closed. What'd you say, Julie? <laughs> no, Jane, you don't love sawdust. <laughs> well, Julie, go to the store. You don't have to have Chinese. You can have Chinese tomorrow night. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna hold the block of cheese and I am just gonna go over all my bread. You can never have too much cheese. I'm also making a mess on my countertop because it is going everywhere, but then I'll clean it up later. There is a food holder that you can use to hold on to the cheese with, but I don't like doing that because then I have to cut the cheese and then I don't necessarily use it all and it wastes it, so we're just doing it this way and it works. Of course, if you want, you can buy pre-done frozen garlic bread but then you have a lot of preservatives in it and I don't really want all those preservatives. I'm not gonna say I don't ever buy that. I do buy that from time to time if I don't have time to go to the grocery store or um, the grocery store doesn't have fresh bread, maybe I will, but for the most part, I typically will just make my own garlic bread because it's very easy. All right, so this is why I did not cut the block of cheese because I didn't use all this cheese, so I'm not wasting any. Now we just cover it up. Find a Ziploc bag, hold on. Find a little Ziploc bag, put it in my Ziploc bag, and this will be good the next time I need it. All right, but we don't want just mozzarella cheese bread, we want Parmesan mozzarella cheese bread. So now I'm going to use the fine grater. I don't know if y'all can see the difference. The, the blades on them are different. Um, they're gonna shave, this one is going to do it fine and not shave it. Okay, so this hopefully you'll be able to see how, how um, it's kind of like snow. Can y'all see that? So I'm just going over it, shredding my fresh Parmesan. I will also shred some more fresh Parmesan over the chicken fettuccine when I serve it on the plates. Same as the mozzarella. I don't want to cut this big old block of cheese because I don't want to waste any of it. I will show you real quick the difference. If I were using the coarse grater, watch how different. It's much bigger. Here, I'll shred some. Well, I can't really shred it in my hand. Let's do this. Okay, so here's, that doesn't really show y'all either. Anyway, it does it more shaved when you do the coarse grater versus the fine grater, does it very snow-like. It's just fine. So the other thing you can use this um, fine grater for is that see lemon slimes oranges. You can also um, use it to um, grate ginger or um, if you need to grate garlic, you can grate garlic on it, so it's really handy handy. Both of the graters are dishwasher safe, so as soon as I stop this video and I'm cleaning up, I'll just stick both of them in the dishwasher just like that. They'll be good to go. Our garlic bread, here it is pre-baked, and I'll take a picture when it's done. That's just gonna go in the oven for, like I said, probably about 10, 15 minutes. I think I'll do like 375, 400 degrees. Um, our fettuccine's are the Chicken fettuccine part's already done. Our pasta is just going to be 16 minutes in the microwave as soon as I get home with Evan. That has the two um, cans of chicken broth. And then I did make a salad when I was shredding the cheese. I'm going to show you all that because it's already done. Um, these are new silicone covers that come in a set of three. Love them to go with our glass bowls just because these don't come with lids. But here is our salad. It is just lettuce, tomato, black olives, cucumber, and some feta cheese. So that is what is for dinner at the McGuire house this evening. Chris, if you happen to watch this, sorry, you're missing out because I'm sure there won't be any left by the time you get back. Oh crap, now I can't get this back on. Um, I'm sure there will not be any left by the time you get back from Vegas um, late tomorrow. I think you come home late tomorrow. Um, why am I having trouble? It's wet. There we go. Okay, so now it's back on there. Let me stick that back in the refrigerator. Um, but anyway, that's what's for dinner here. You know, that took us, I don't know, 30, 35 minutes or so. Um, but yet, it's going to be very, very good. My son will be excited. He didn't know I was making it tonight. And this is his favorite meal. But it's also one of my favorite meals, so he lucks out. Um, used lots of very practical tools that you can use for every meal that you fix in your kitchen. So if there are some things that I use that you don't have, 
by all means, you know, at any point you can go to my website and order those, um, host a party with me. I have a couple dates left in September with our new catalog coming out. Um, and I hope these videos are helpful for you. I am not one that loves to cook. I am not the best cook in the world, even though I've been a Pampered Chef consultant for 10 years. So I just want to use these videos to show you that anyone can make um, a good meal for their family. My meals aren't always healthy. Um, this is definitely probably not healthy. It's got whipping cream and that kind of stuff, but it's very good. Better than going to Olive Garden. I will say that, although I'm going there for lunch tomorrow to meet some um, new consultants. But anyway, you know, it's just where having a home-cooked meal always is better than going out to eat. So I hope the videos have helped. I'll scroll back through all the comments because I'm sure there's some questions that I missed. Um, I just see that Leanne... Oh, thanks. Leanne, I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Hopefully they are providing some great tips. Yeah, now you don't want Subway. Well, everybody can just come to my house. I mean, we can all just have a one little spoonful of this because it's not gonna feed, you know, tons. But anyway, I do hope that this is helpful. Maybe all of y'all can try chicken fettuccine tomorrow night. Um, again, I'll go through the questions and if you have any other questions, just let me know. But thanks for joining me in my kitchen tonight. Um, not sure if I'll cook tomorrow night or not, but if it is something fun and exciting, I will let y'all join me tomorrow. Bye!